Why are you laughing? We don't have mics, so we don't, I don't want to talk a whole lot. So yeah. you're going to be too low. So we've got Miss Blur's incubator number one and incubator number two over here. So different batches of eggs. These are chicken eggs. And we're actually using Home Assistant to hatch them. And doing a simple like tapo camera and using the plug-in, I'll get to some of the software stuff, but basically I never trusted the humidity and the temperature on this because it looks like a DHT11, which those are pretty uh, not accurate. So I've thrown in several different sensors because you never can trust just one. Done the same thing on the Jankubator as we call it, or as I call it, <laughs> but I've got you can see one of the little ATC ones in there, and I think there's a Zigbee one hanging out right there because this isn't all accurate on this one either. So, yeah, let's get to it, and we'll show you in Home Assistant some of the stuff we do. And, um, yeah, we will continue to do the story of when these actually hatch. I have some automation set up to go to Ms. Blur's phone, and just really simple. This is the Acaria temperature sensor. Send the temperature and the humidity over when it goes out of spec. And it's, I think it's been really beneficial for doing the process. Absolutely. Um, I need the um, humidity between a certain... <laughs> I cannot talk. I need the humidity between a certain percentages. So if it falls between that percentage, it sends me an alert. So I know to come add more water to the incubator. If it goes too high, I need to come pull one of the plugs to lower the humidity. Right now, I do need to add water because I need it between 65 and 75 percent and it's too low right now. So I'm about to add water to the incubator. Now the reason why we're adding right now, we're about to hit the second phase, which is I'm going to have to go in and change the ranges for on these three sensors and the alerts because you can see we're at day 18, and this is the Home Assistant dash, but day 18 is when we need to take the egg turner out and crank up the humidity so the eggs are moist so the chickens can hatch out of them and not be dried out. So now I'm gonna add more water because the humidity just isn't high enough. And you just pull the plug over here, and I have to add, it tells you to do it with a turkey baster, but, um, I don't have a turkey baster, so I'm using a child's medicine thingy. And it just adds water into a little canal in the bottom. So you can see in here, I've got the Shelly one. There's a it's Bluetooth, and then I've got the third reality one over on the other side. They all kind of give different temperatures because they're in different locations of the box. You can see one of the eggs holders right there, the Acaria, and I've got it actually facing up. So that one's actually catching the heat from the incubator fan right there. So I, I always say that one is a little higher, but I like to go by that one on the humidity. And that's a Zigbee sensor. And this one is the Acaria, so this is only 59. It should be drier because it's getting blown on by the heater. So about to put them in lockdown. We had three bad ones, basically taking a light and shining through it. And you can see that they are actually clear. There's not just solid darkness in them, just basically called candling them. Can you, is it moving right now? Yeah, I can see it. it goes from like dark to light. This is our second time candling them. We wanted to pull out the bad ones. Yeah, because that's gonna, that would be bad, like rotten. 
So this was the automatic egg turner that was just turning them once a day for us automatically. And you don't need them after day 18 and just laying them on the trade and crank up the humidity so hopefully the shells will be moistened so the little chicks can peep out and break their way out. And that's where the fun of the camera comes in. Almost time for this. Yeah, this is um, pretty good stuff. Um, so we actually came home and now we have two little chicks hopping around doing their thing a day early. So definitely some of the other ones have pipped and you can see movement in various ones. You can see the little crack in that one, right? If you look right there, you see that little hole there has been getting movement. And some of these other ones also have the little cracks, the holes in them. They're basically got to stick the beak out and hopefully they'll hatch tomorrow. I'll do this. I get them out. I make a little ramp with my hand, and then they'll walk up my little ramp. How many you got in there, dude? Uh, I, uh, I think like 16, 15. <laughs> you cooking them, and the camera looks all red. I guess because the heat lamp bulb. Yeah. <laughs> looks like we're cooking them. <laughs> Not yet, right? And this, and chicken. And a few of them have, and like three of them have five toes. Yeah, like this one. This one has five toes. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And then, the cutest one out of all of them. A little black one. They're probably I guess it's like more like a gray. Yeah, it's like a grayish tan, I guess. We got a total of 16 hatched out of the 18? I think. Yep. Not bad for the ratio. So I want to talk about the importance of temperature and humidity in the incubator because that's where the whole thing lies behind of like constantly notifying us. Now I will say you will drive yourself crazy as I have because yeah, I couldn't find like multiple sensors that would agree on each other. So I just kept throwing sensors in the box and trying to find like, hey, let's do an average of ones. And you may be saying, well, what's the best sensor to use? I don't know yet. There's one issue I'm gonna talk about is, you can see these sensors are exactly the same model. Crazy that, you know, I have one out here that I used to just have in my network closet. That's why it's called Inkbird Network. And it just, it, I don't know why it runs so much hotter and the humidity is so much drier. This, this is not actually correct. This other Inkbird, I think, is more in line. This is a Bluetooth sensor. I love the little sensors, but it runs it on triple A's. And this one is, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I, it makes me want to like, well, I'll go buy another Inkbird. So I've kind of dropped that one out. Um, and the Zoos. It's a Zoos 4-in-1 I've used before. It's like the Z-Wave thing. It's horrible. You see it like doesn't report a lot. I don't know if that's like the Z-Wave issues I have. It's not far from the Z-Wave coordinator, you know, radio. It's like one wall in between. So it's not like a signal issue. So I'm going to say drop that one out. Um, but you can see the Akara 98. A very important, I will say, is the humidity. Because you really want to make sure that you're not drying out your eggs because when they start to go and they pip 
at the very end, it's going to, they won't be able to get out. They'll die. And then you'll be upset that your ratio is way far down. Like our first batch we did, we had um, 18 eggs that were fertilized and two of them kind of pipped and then didn't one of them didn't so they died so we had like 16 out of 18 that hatched that's a very good ratio and i believe that's due to we stayed really on top of the humidity well i guess miss blur made sure and stayed on the humidity so you can see all these kind of agree so really doesn't matter what all sensors you do just find you three decent sensors and kind of average those out or even do an average template I guess the other issue I have is Home Assistant itself. The dashboard stuff for me just sucks of like, still, this is the new sections thing. Why is this all black on the desktop? And then the camera shoved down here. I've tried dragging it up here, but it won't go on the phone. It's fine because it looks like about like this. It's just one column. And I'm not making multiple dashes, one for the phone, one for a tablet, one for the desktop. I, I just want to make one dash and just kind of simple. I'm going to remove a bunch of these. And then I did put a uh, countdown timer. I left my old batch timer in there. So don't look at this one. We're 19 days on this one. And um, so we're pretty close. It's going to be time to take the egg turner out. And this is just a camera. It's a little cheap Tapo camera that works well with using some of the HACS components. So just find you like, I like to have like a simple little Wi-Fi camera that you can just throw on top. The Tapo one works great because it has a flat face. So I can just stick it on the plexiglass of there and it works out great. Has a little base. Kind of like that one. I think you can get those for like 20 to $30 depending on sales. And like I say, it's locally brings it into HACS, which is pretty cool. Then you can, you know, use the cloud app if you want. Um, and then you can throw a little micro SD card into things. So pretty much nothing else on the temperature sensors. And uh, I'll leave all the links to the ones that I use and like down below. So in our lessons learned for when we're going to do this another time, actually I talked to the Apollo automation guys and they sent me this cool Temp1 Pro sensor. It has Ethernet for PoE, you got USB-C if you're going to use Wi-Fi like I am, since we aren't, you know, running Ethernet to the incubator. Now the cool thing is it has a really awesome sensor because that's the one of the issues that I've had is with all the sensors inside, especially during hatching. Just a little headphone jack. We can dangle it through the little vent hole here and it won't get messy during the hatching process like the other sensors. So it just has this little like little dust cover that's on here. It has really good humidity, temperature readings. I definitely say better than the other wireless sensors. These, like the Acaria ones, I've had to like let them just run around and the chickens while they're hatching, they bump it around, get gook and blood and everything on it. And actually one of these stopped working during the hatching. Luckily I had multiple. We're not gonna have that issue next time. I'm gonna use the Apollo Automation Temp 1 Pro. Now I do wish, and I've asked them, is maybe that we could get a model of the smaller Temp 1 that maybe the Temp 2 that will use that SHT20 instead of having this big block. But it's no problem. I'll just sticky tape it to the top of the incubator and call it a day. So you can find all the links down below for all of these. And there are affiliate links, but there's no additional cost to you, but it does help support the channel. So that'll about do it for this one. If you want to see some other stuff, some other hatching or other things that maybe you've done with Home Assistant, definitely let us know. I like to see all the different little projects out there. So do appreciate you watching. Thanks to all the Patreon members, YouTube members. Couldn't do it without you. And yup, y'all know the drill. Press all them buttons. And y'all take care.